work has been done on S1P receptor modulation in multiple sclerosis. The first drug that was approved, which was an S1P receptor modulator, was fingolimod. Uh, now, that particular product uh, was perhaps less selective than some of our newer therapies and had, um, you know, I think a, a fairly challenging adverse event profile. Not that we couldn't get around it. We got used to doing it, uh, but that drug required first dose observation, um, routine ophthalmological evaluations, and then uh, pre and post uh, treatment uh, surveillance laboratory studies. Uh, as well as dermatological evaluations. Uh, and so it, it did, uh, uh, it, it was the very first oral therapy approved for use in MS in the United States. And so that was uh, an important advance forward. But since the introduction of Fingolimod, we have now uh, three um, other S1P receptor modulators that are uh, more selective, uh, targeting either S1P1 and S1P5 receptors, which is the case. Um, for uh, two of the other uh, treatments, and then one which just is S1P1 receptor only. So both Ozanamod um, and Saponamod or S1P1, S1P5 uh, selective, and Panesamod is S1P1 only selective. So we have these three other treatments um, that uh, I think when you look at the overall uh, data do show a, a, a more favorable adverse event profile uh, relative to that of fingolimod. Now, there are important caveats there. There's cross-trial comparison, and so we don't have head-to-head -head data. Uh, but generally speaking, it does seem that the uh, refinement in the S1P1 a receptor uh, subtype targeting has resulted in some improvements. In addition, half-life is different for these products. And so uh, we can use um, a gradual titration up for, for a couple of these drugs, which allows uh, one to take the medicine at home as opposed to requiring a first dose observation. And that I think is a uh, important uh, feature for use, but it makes the use of these products very attractive. Um, the FDO can be quite off-putting to patients, and it is a, um, a challenging uh, procedure to uh, have to, to go through uh, from a, a practical uh, standpoint. Much easier just to take a pill at home than have to come in and be monitored for several hours with EKGs before and after. So uh, I think there are definitely improvements in terms of convenience, in terms of efficacy. Uh, all of these drugs do have a robust effect at preventing relapses and stopping uh, new lesion formation. Uh, depending on the drug and depending on the clinical trial, there are also effects in disability worsening. Uh, for example, with saponamod, uh, this was a, a product that was investigated in patients with secondary progressive MS, and there showed a robust effect in terms of prevention of disability worsening. And so that's an important consideration for that particular product. Some of the drugs have done active comparator studies, which I think is quite interesting. Uh, so uh, traditionally, uh, you know, a, a lot of trials were done with a straight placebo comparison, but uh, with the development of uh, at least two of these products, active comparators were used and clearly showing a superior efficacy of the s one receptor modulator uh, over uh, other therapies. Uh, in the case of Ozanamod, that's a superiority over interferon beta-1A. Um, intramuscular, and in the case of penesimod, superiority over teraflunamide, an oral disease-modifying therapy. So uh, I, to answer your question about when should these medications be used, well, certainly uh, they're indicated for frontline use in the United States. Um, indications are going to be variable depending on geographic region. Uh, but from a conceptual standpoint, I think it's important to think about using highly effective treatments uh, early on in the course of, of uh, the, the disease of MS. Uh, so my uh, preference is to use uh, highly effective treatments as frontline uh, therapies. I think there's no reason not to if you've got an adequate safety profile, and that seems to be the case with the S1P receptor modulators. So I tend to use these frontline as well as in patients who've had ongoing disease activity despite treatment with other, uh, for example, uh, auto-injectable medications. I think, I think we do need more data. I mean, it depends on the agent. So there does seem to be a rebound effect with fingolimod, for example, that's been fairly well documented. Uh, we don't really see that with ozanamod, interestingly. 
And I don't quite understand why that's the case. One would think if, if this were, were all uh, uh, working through the same S1P1 lymphocyte sequestration process, uh, that rebound would be common to all of them, but that may not be the case. And so I do think we need to have further investigation in that. Uh, there is work that's been done with Ozanima that hopefully will be presented later on this year, uh, which will uh, review the um, uh, absence of a rebound effect seen with those animal treatment uh, discontinuation.